I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So I got I got a Shutter um, trial pr- subscription recently. How long do the, is it? Is it like a 15 day or is it a full month? Seven, seven, days. seven day. Yeah, right. it's on Amazon Prime, but um, oh. I got a I got a seven day free trial because uh, so th- they do the free trials through Prime. Yeah, well, they you can you can get it as a channel. So oh. the reason I did that was because I wanted to see VHS uh, nineteen ninety four, which yeah. was the be- like easily the best VHS that's been released yet, like bar none. I'll have to check that. So I, you told me about it. I didn't check it out because um, I don't have Shutter, but I do have Prime. So yeah. I may uh, may do the same the same deal yeah. there. Yeah, you can get a you can get a, a free trial for seven days, but make sure you cancel it afterwards because it's like eight bucks a month. Yeah, which true. is which is like as good as cool as some of the movies that are on there is. Like, I feel like that's a very high price for something that's just horror movies for something that that's kind of niche. Yeah, I, th- I feel like Shutter and like, Crunchyroll, for at least for me, fall into the same category of pay for it, binge a whole bunch, and then cancel it, and then come back in a few months, and then. Just on and off. See, Crunchyroll is one of those things. I'm just too much of a weeb to cancel it. Oh. Um. But what was I gonna say? Uh the other thing that was very so. There's a few unexpected things. I posted one of them in the uh, in the Discord because I've been I've been watching a bunch of horror because we're recording this in October. Yeah. Um, to uh, 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 spread our cheeks a little bit for everybody, this one's being pre-recorded. Because there's a solid yeah. chance there's a I'll have a little cryptid on my hands at this point in time when you're hearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have this as like a filler, and then we'll see, hopefully we'll be able to record another one after it and keep things going. We'll find out. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to install <laughs> a uh, a red recording light in the nursery, and uh, hopefully she'll she'll get that. That's quiet time. No, that's that's exactly how babies work. That's how it works. Yeah. Uh huh. They they're very they're very courteous to recording schedules. Um, but I had a few surprises. One that that movie about the sentient pants. Yes. Uh, turns out not about a not a pair of Nazi pants. It's not actually 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 the opposite. Um, almost completely the opposite. And it was really good. It was really funny. Huh. Shoot. Um, there's a movie called Dave Made a Maze, which is very strange. Um. It's really all I can say about it. There's like a minotaur that's made out of cardboard. I, I don't know. That sounds um, fun. I'll have to check that. And out. then, um, Creep Show, the twenty the twenty nineteen revival, like the yeah. TV series, really good, really funny. I'll have to check. It. I heard a lot about really that, so funny. Do, uh... I I, it's not horror. I wouldn't call it horror because like, I've not been freaked out by even a single thing. I'd call yeah. it gore. I'd call it horror themed, but I wouldn't call it horror because it's not like I don't know. Gotcha. None of the none of the concepts have really scared me enough. Yeah. But they've been good, like consistently good. That's all I can really say. Okay. Right on. Yeah. I'll uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll save you I'll, some time since you're in like a, a media consumption mood. The new Dune movie that just came out yesterday, you can go ahead and just not just you can just skip that one. I it was would, already going to. It would have been a good movie if it was forty minutes long, and they made it two and a half hours, and like four things happen. <laughs> it was so long and nothing happened at all. Um. Oh. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, like. Dune is an acquired taste in the best of circumstances. Yeah, well, I, the, the, I, and I could like, never finished the first one from the 80s, the yeah. David Lynch one. Cause I, but I was like, oh, that's David Lynch. It's in the 80s, weird pacing, whatever. This well, one Lynch is clearly, yeah. like, I think they watched that and went, let's keep 
the same pacing, but they fucking trick you. Because what they do is, like, the first 20 minutes is absolutely nothing. But I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, it's world building because it's just, like, two characters talk. So I'm like, eh, it's world building. And then by the time I, you keep cutting them little breaks, next thing you know, you're at, like... It also, the world building, the... the uh, the, 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 the huh. So the first 20 minutes, you find out that there's a planet called... This won't spoil anything. There's a planet called Arrakis. It has a native population. That native population um, lives in an area with a natural resource that em- the Empire wants. So I, you think Spice. this is going to be a movie about like an Empire trying to control the natural resource of an indigenous people. And then there's going to be conflicts between that. So basically, an episode of Cryptopedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, an episode of Cryptopedia that none of that never had. That has nothing to do with any part of the movie. It it's like that. That there is uh, like that. Like yeah, that sounds that sounds exactly like what I expected. There's there's uh, they're all like they're like uh, like the Empire comes to control the resource, and then things completely unrelated to that happens, and then. The native population was like, "Yes, Empire, uh, please join us. We want to be with you. You're you're our Neo." Literally, the guy from the Empire shows up, and they're like, "You're the chosen one." I hate it. It's it's weird. I hate it. I but hate also, it so much. But also, that that arc takes about two and a half hours. It's two and a half hours long. It's two and a half hours. And there's only that's, four story points. There's only four po- four. There's four beats, <laughs> and they're very far so, spread out. That's so long. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I've kind of reached a point in my life where like two hour movies are not appealing to me anymore. Like <laughs> yeah, well there there's they're uh, they're not appealing to me. I wanted to watch it because I wanted to watch. I felt like I missed out by not seeing the first Dune, so I I thought I would like catch up on this but it turns out reading the back of the book cover does good enough but they did a lot of stuff they showed you a lot of stuff you didn't need to see like um they tell you frequently like oh like if you ever saw tremors you get the point of the whole sandworm thing like they feel rhythm yeah yeah. so and then like the main character's watching a video like basically he's watching youtube video of someone going this is how you walk on the sand so it's arrhythmic therefore you won't attract worms and you go got it so now the next time i ever see anybody walking on sand i already have that knowledge so you don't have to re-explain it to me every single time anybody walks ever (sighs) but no you get to watch other people give the exact same example to other people before they start walking on the sand even though this is something you've already seen somebody else watching this so they're re they do a lot of that <laughs> why i it's i would say the movie <laughs> there's a lot of odd editing decisions uh i i mean that sounds like a problem that's more critical than editing decisions to be totally honest yes. that sounds that sounds like an issue with like the very soul of that movie yeah and then there's a lot of stuff where uh, um uh, what's another example? That there's something where you go, ah, this is something I'm interested in. Like, say, a cool fight scene, but instead they'll abridge the fight scene. They'll cut it really short, and then you'll get to watch somebody, like, struggle to fly an aircraft in the sand for, like, uh, two minutes straight. And you're like, why are you abridging the fight scenes to watch? It's just one guy flying, th- and he's like, oh, no, the stick is harder to move because... uh they only had they only had one fight choreographer and they they like <laughs> could only get him for like a week so they had to film all the fight sequences in a week so that oh have you watched the movies that made us on uh Netflix the the new horror uh, ones I haven't watched the new horror ones but oh. that 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 definitely would be something that would happen in a lot of the horror movies that series is actually good and a very funny thing is one a lot of them are kind of like some have you watch there's like several of them where like how is this not a money laundering scheme like there's literally a guy there there's a couple of them where they are they they're like yeah it was money laundering but anyway i mean a lot of horror movies are money laundering like <laughs> trolls 2 is explicitly money yeah. laundering but there's one where like the special effects guy was leaving and like there was no fight choreographer and they were walking past and saw how shitty the fight scene was and it just so happened he was like a medieval um 
like tra- he was trained in like medieval fights, whatever, just for like he liked going to Renaissance fairs. So he took a classes and became a registered like you can do Fucking fight. Nerd. So then he choreographed their fight scene because there's no fight choreographer on the set. <laughs> um Anyway, <laughs> let's dive into it. Uh, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And today we're talking about eels. And yes, I'm talking about the eels that you're thinking about. Um, just the normal extant eels. Because So the Normie episode took so long to write because a lot of that time was me going down the eel rabbit hole. But what's so special about eels, you may ask? They're a known animal. And yeah, they're known. Everybody knows about eels. Um, but to that question, I respond with, where do eels come from? Where the fuck do they come from? I, as I said in the first recording of this, I'm pretty sure it's interdimensional space. It is, but it I'm is not positive. Or buttholes. Space. The, buttholes. The interdimensional space inside buttholes, that's where they come out of. But they other fish buttholes? enter an orifice. Now, where they exit, that's up to the they'll, eel. But they'll where enter, they can. They'll, they'll exit, exit where they, they can. can. They'll exit where they can. Yes. If I've learned anything from Cockneys, that's, that's where they'll exit. <laughs> that is exactly where they'll exit. So here's some eel shit that we'll be exploring and that will be keeping you up at night just thinking about it because we still don't know where eels come from. Eels in the wild and in captivity have never been observed mating. Once <clears throat> again, Brandon, so <laughs> the thing that I said in the version of this that, that got fucked, you put me in front of two eels, they gonna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they they're, fucking. Oh, they're gonna. Uh, tr- uh, they just, fucking. I, in front I'm picturing of me. two eels in a tank filled with Astroglide. They just, just kind of wrap so around slippery. each other. It's just like they just kind of rub against each other. That's just how it works. That's how oh, lots of mating works. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's like every piece of mating ever. It's just a little bit of friction. Yeah, just rubbing some bits. Mm-hmm. Also, eels have no male reproductive organs. Eel ovaries weren't even found until the 1800s, and no eel in the history of the world has ever had testicles. Eel eggs weren't even discovered to exist until 2011. That's a weird, like, how do, how, how do we, like, how? My, that's how? my only question is, like, how? how? That's the problem. It, like, that's, again, why it took so like, long to write the well, Normie episode, because the well, more you read about eels, the more you're like, but how? But how? But how did? But how? But how did that take so long? Yeah. But how? Because I've, I've seen eels in aquariums I've seen before. Eels. I've seen I've, eels at zoos. I've eaten eels, and we. Still I've don't seen know eels where in the happen. water. Yeah. I've seen eels in the ri- in the fucking river. I've seen yeah. them. I know they exist. Yeah. They're, They're we, not new. <laughs> we literally thought eels just spontaneously came into existence by magic. Until science came along and said magic is dumb and we just don't know. Um, you can't prove that. But how do these godless abominations of nature come to be? Aristotle tells us that the eel is neither fail fail is neither fail. male nor female. I mean, that's and, a pretty good way of saying male. It, it is. Like. That is fair. Um, <laughs> and can engender nothing. Nor was an eel ever found supplied with either milt or spawn, nor are they, when cut open, found to have within them passages for spawn or for eggs. Hmm. Aristotle thought r- when rainwater hit mud, sometimes eels just kind of happened. And you can't prove that it doesn't happen. you That's the problem, John. We <laughs> still can't prove that that's not how that happens. You literally can't disprove that? You can't. You can't prove it yet. You haven't, they haven't proven it, but you can't disprove it. And that's the beauty of the null hypothesis, Brandon. <laughs> it is. Pliny the Elder, who we might have mentioned in the past, um, but if you don't know about him, he contributed, uh, if not most of, a huge amount of modern knowledge about Roman naturalism and medicine, and he comes up frequently on many a topic uh, present during that time period. Um, in Athanius, which is a, a book that Pliny wrote, um, we are told that eels entwine themselves just how you hypothesize when mm-hmm, they fucking. Mm-hmm. They, they fucking. That's how they fucking. 
<laughs> discharge a, a, a sort of viscous fluid from their bodies. Astroglide. As we we were on it the whole time. Mm-hmm. That's the astroglide is the viscous fluid. That's where all astroglide comes from. It's Eels. just eel goop. Um, there's just a giant, like, there is just a giant vat of eels in the factory that produces astroglide, and they just kind of skim the top because yeah. they fucking constantly. All the time. They horny. There's nothing's more horny than an eel. Uh, this, it is said, lies in the mud and generates living creatures. Pliny explains that eels scrape themselves against rocks and the particles scraped off come to life. In the I mean, six- that happens to me. That that's how that's how babies are made. Uh, that is explicit. You, you're about to have one. That's yeah. That's how it works, right? How, how we did it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I scraped my eel on a rock. <laughs> it sounds painful. It, it was. <laughs> In the 1600s, writer Isaac Walton wrote that they breed as some worms do out of putrefaction of the earth. And divers and ways that eels are bred of a particular dew falling in the months of May and June on the banks of some particular ponds and rivers, which in a few days uh, is by the sun by the sun's heat turned into eels. I, I just I just literally don't I it's, don't get that one. It's it's because that one I don't get. I don't get it. Like it's I, because I can nobody underst- knows, so they're just guessing. They're just making but shit I, up. I can almost understand the putrefaction one because, like, the fact that you see maggots appear on a yeah, corpse, you, you right? You can observe maggots like, appear out of just d- d- decaying like, meat. Because you don't see the fly, fly lay the eggs, like, I can see that, right? Yeah. Like, I can see the train of logic from maggot to eel because they're very, their morphology is similar. They're wiggly. Right? They're wiggly guys. They're, they're them wiggly bits. But due to eel, that that one doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. No, it's the same way Pokemon evolve. Um, it was supposed. I mean, <laughs> that shellfish in general grew spontaneously in mud, slime, uh, sandy bottoms, and in the matter that collected on piles of wood, logs, in the bottoms of ships. Among them uh, were oysters, cockles. Barnacles, <laughs> limpets, <laughs> made sure to get said and, cock and hermit crabs, cock, cockles. Um, uh, I I also want to point out a weird synchronicity between the thing that you were saying about Pokemon. Yes, remember the fact that in remember in Generation Two in Gold and Silver they were like we just don't know where the eggs come from. Oh yeah, no one's seen two Pokemon breeding, but apparently the eggs just show up. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is eels are Pokemon. Yes. It's, nobody can ever observe a Pokemon mate. If you saw two Mr. Mimes going at it, you would throw yourself <laughs> off a bridge immediately. Nobody can oh. observe that. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. That sounds like some prime fetish material. <laughs> Honestly, oh. if I if I looked up Mr. Mime x Mr. Mime, I'd probably find a fuck ton of shit on that. I'm sure there's well, got to be I a lot of... Well, I definitely would. Like, not Mr. Safer. Mime x Jinx, I can definitely find a lot on. Oh, I can guarantee yeah. that. Guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Mime x Ash's mom, Delia, catch him. That's probably got a fuck ton, too. Oh yeah, oh because he's her. That makes sense. Even there, from like the weird like porn storylines, like as mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. functioning as her butler. Anyway, well yeah, and then uh, then Professor Oak. Well, actually, it starts with Professor Oak and Delia catch him. Right, this yeah. is how the scene starts. They fuck, him, right? <laughs> it's- then Mister Mime shows up and he's like, "I'm here. <laughs> he's here to deliver a pizza." But what's that? She doesn't <laughs> have any money. And the pizza's completely invisible. Yeah. <laughs> so they do the like uh the dick in the pizza box thing. Right? <laughs> dick in a box, and, but, but the box is invisible. But, but it's an invisible box. So <laughs> you just see the dick. It's it's a meat pie. And it's really all she ever wanted. Um mm-hmm. it, what do we know what happened to Ash's dad, by the way? He's only been he's been mentioned literally once in the course of the entire series. Like ever. He's been mentioned one time, I think. Huh. Weird. Yeah. Um, and like they didn't even say any identifying information about him. <laughs> it's probably Professor Oak. 
It's probably pre- it's probably yeah. Professor Oak or is Ash half Pokemon? The Egyptian. Uh, no, Mister uh, yeah. Mister Mime was found uh, before they went to the Indigo League, so Ash was a part of Mister Mime getting caught. Oh, okay. So, like, that wouldn't be the case. Unless this was an elaborate plan by Ash's mom. Ash is Mew 3. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. He's Mew 3. Um, that, explains how he, that's a, that explains how he survived and he's basically an immortal child. But, you know. Yeah. The Egyptians thought that eels came from the sun hitting the Nile River. An Dumb. excerpt from a New Yorker idol, uh, New Yorker article titled... Uh, Where Do Eels Come From by Brooke Jarvis, uh, written May 18th of 2020, uh, says that as late as the 1860s, a Scottish author espoused an old belief that they began their lives as beetles. Some believe they were born of seafoam, uh, Svensson writes, uh, or created when the rays of the sun fell on a certain kind of dew that covered the lake shores and river banks in the spring in the English countryside. Uh, where eel fishing was popular. Most people adhered to the theory that eels were born when hairs from horses' tails fell into the water. So I want to say the belief that they begin their lives as beetles, honestly... It's just weird. Not the worst. At least beetles already exist and are living things. Like, here's the thing. Like, if you've seen an antlion's life cycle or you've seen a butterfly's life cycle, like... I could see that, right? Like, it's like, oh, this small thing became a big thing. Okay, that makes sense. Hair from a horse kind of makes sense. It's a wiggly squiggly thing, right? It's a wiggly squiggly, it just turns into a bigger wiggly squiggly. The rays of light on dew, I want to point out again, what the actual fuck? We we (laughs) don't. So maybe like it goes do to a beetle, which kind of is like bigger do and then to, to from beetle to eel because just because just because that, that's a, um so where does modern science come to play in the sum two thousand years of us believing eels burst into existence from magic? It's got to be longer than that though, but it's got to be lo- like that's the thing, right? Eels yeah. have got to have been they've been around for like. I'm pretty sure they're like a like not that recent of an evolutionary step as as long as there has been writing we have been writing about how we don't know where eels come from but how the, the, exactly exactly um so surprising no one the man investigating were these aquatic devil dicks with no balls uh would be the one and only Sigmund Freud Sometimes it's just a penis. Sometimes it's just a penis. Sometimes it's a fucking, just a cock that bursts from nothing. And sometimes, sometimes, Brandon? Yes. It's cigar. Some, sometimes it's cigar is just a good smoke. It, um, well, no, no, no. The penis is a cigar. Don't smoke it's not it. A, it's, it doesn't it, fire well, no good. So, on the topic of Shudder stuff that I watched, I watched the Mortuary Collection finally. Yeah. And in that movie, you get to see a penis explode. <laughs> Wait, like a prank cigar? Like from a cartoon? Uh, more like a child being birthed out of a penis, and it explodes out oh, the penis. Fun. It's one of the funniest things <laughs> I've seen in a while. <laughs> oh, God. Uh <laughs> In 18- That's all I have to say. Complete non sequitur. Non sequitur. It's going to be in my nightmares tonight for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't worry. It's super <laughs> funny, actually. Is it? Is it? Please tell me it's like practical effects. Uh, I think it's a little bit practical, a little bit CGI. Like, I think okay. it's punched up with CGI. I think yeah. there is like a physical penis that they blew up. Like, not a real penis, but like. Yeah, who's going to volunteer a for fi- that? A f- I mean, people volunteer to get eaten alive. Is, yeah. And they like like for some reason, like I feel like there's been more than one case in which the people shared like the person getting eaten and the person eating them shared the penis as like a part of the meal before the person died. Yeah. Like I feel like that's a thing. And I don't get it, but I think it's a thing. 
Yeah, I've seen a lot of videos that they're there. I'm going to walk back a couple of statements. Um, in yeah. 1876, <laughs> Freud went for his hunt for balls in the Italian city of Trieste. Uh, every morning wait, he went. F- yes. Freud was like, I need. Wait, well, this is a younger Freud, though. This right? is a younger this Freud in 1876. 1876 yeah. um, okay, okay. I don't. I should have. Written down how old he was, uh, but this is this is early in F- F- Freud's career. Um, he went every morning to the docks and bought as many eels as he could get and dissected all of them, just trying to find their reproductive organs. This went on for months. He dissected roughly four hundred eels and he found nothing. No balls. He butchered so many eels for so long that in a letter that he wrote to a friend, he wrote, quote, all I can see when I close my eyes is shimmering dead tissue, which haunts my dreams. <laughs> um, so I just want to point out yeah. uh, that he was 20 when he when this happened. Okay. And this is the most 20 year old thing. The most 20 like, year old. This like, is if you try to picture Freud in his twenties, him buying and dissecting as many phallic like animals as he can, trying to find their testicles. Where are the testicles? This explains everything about like all of his penis stuff. Yeah. He was fascinated with it since he was twenty. Yeah. Because he's been cutting into eels. So much that when he closes his eyes, that's all he can see. <laughs> he sees the absence <laughs> of eel horror stories. Um, uh, cut to 10 years later in 1886, uh, Yves Delic Dalgash, a French zoologist, had a marine animal called a, uh, leptocephalus in a fish tank in his lab. It has in phallus in the name. Roscoff, France. Uh, it does. Fa- it, it does. There's Freud, again, leptocephalus. Anyway, the leptoencephali, which is their plural, um, are these tiny little weird, like, flat creatures Latin literally means um, flat head, and they're just a, a few millimeters long. They're these really tiny, flat, wiggly things. And one day, he went to check on his fish tank and found that the leptocephalus was not in the tank, but rather a glass eel was there. Um, what? And after even more time passed, the glass eel was then replaced with an elver eel. He found that what were all previously thought to be entirely different species of eel were all the exact same species at different points within their life cycle. Eels metamorphosed. So if you scroll back the pages of this document, wait, John, wait. every single image is the exact same species of eel at different points of its life cycle. Wait, wait a fucking second. Wait a fucking second, Brandon. <laughs> That's not a joke? That's not a joke. That's a real thing? No one was, like, fucking with him? No. No one was fucking with him. (laughs) What are you fucking (laughs) telling me right now? Brandon. Yeah. Brandon. 1886, we discovered that all of the eels are the same eel. (laughs) Even moray? That doesn't sound right. Moray eels aren't eels. Oh, because you have a picture of a moray eel. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about specifically okay. the American and European salt, uh, 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 freshwater eels. Like the okay, most common okay, eel. Okay. So eels <laughs> have exactly seven stages, one having been assumed to exist, but only discovered in 2011. We'll touch back on that later. <laughs> Maybe uh, they're just phoenixes. They're just phoenixes. Starting with leptoencephali. Uh, the small, flat, almost fully clear stage. They then turn into to noodles called glass eels, and the glass eels are they're still they're, they're round. Elvers mm. are a bit bigger and are now eel colored rather than the clear abominations of nature. I uh, mean, they're all abominations of nature. Let's Brandon, like, they, they wait a second, are. wait a second. Every eel is an abomination of nature. Let's not pretend that they're not. <laughs> that again, fair. Um, those then turn to yellow eels, who turn into silver eels, and then mature eels. Um, all of these were known species forever, and Eves just discovered that they were in fact one and not many separate species. So this is this is sort of giving credence, I'm not gonna lie, to the whole beetle theory. <laughs> <laughs> like, less crazy, less crazy now that is, you- It's get honestly far. way less crazy. Yeah. Like, 
way less crazy <laughs> when you consider the fact that this happens. Yeah. Um, so now it was over a decade before people believed Professor Eves. Um, and this was possibly due to some past comments he made, like, quote, I readily admit that there is no... <laughs> Uh, there's no absolutely definite evidence that such a thing as evolution has ever taken place. Um, um, and okay. in, in 1902, he had the Shroud of Turin brought to him and claimed that there was a 1 in 10 billion chance that it was a fake. Um, which, <laughs> which it is. Uh, <laughs> and then, Fucking dumbass. And then there was that one time in 1895 when he kept trying to clone sea urchins. Well, that's not that. That's a less weird thing. Um, so Depending on how he was trying to do it, <laughs> yeah. was he just like cutting them in half and being like, "They keep fucking dying." I don't. I don't get it. Why do they keep dying? <laughs> he was doing it by cutting them. <laughs> and Are you fucking kidding no. me? Now, there, there's. I mean, I guess because starfish do stuff like that, but like it's it's in less earthworms. crazy when you read his. I, I forget the name of the organ, but there there are organs where if you cut them, they'll like regenerate. So he was trying yeah. to do basically that. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, he was trying to do it by just cutting them. Um, you know what? Uh, if I do this, we'll just have an endless <laughs> supply of urchin for food. Yeah, uh, world hunger <laughs> solved in a second. So some of his ideas aside, uh, he discovered the modern idea of why eels don't have testicles. The current idea is that they grow them only in the last stage of their life just before they mate. Um, so they only got them when they need them is kind of the, the present idea. Um, They're it, like the frogs almost from Jurassic Park, except completely not like the frogs from Jurassic Park. So. Yeah. So, uh, a quick mode of bookkeeping, I'm talking explicitly about European and American freshwater eels um, that, that we still haven't found their balls. There's other types of eel where you go, look, that's a testicle. This, the most common kind of eel, we just don't, we just, we just don't know. Um, just sins. They're sins against nature and all, they're just all humanity. They're sins against nature. Um, so, the clear picture of the eel's life cycle presented so many more questions. Because I could be happy living in a world where this magically burst out of horsehair. Um, so here's some yeah. odd things about eels. Leptoencephali are only found what? in the ocean. Freshwater eels, on the other hand, are not. Their, <laughs> their lifespan Continue. is roughly 70 years, and they haven't been observed in the ocean. How is it that the larval stage of the eel is found only in the ocean where Brandon, there are I, no eels? I want to take a second and just say, what the <laughs> fuck? Right? 70 fucking years? Yeah, that also makes it very hard to observe the full lifespan of eels but, to, but any, to, a, to 70, any significant degree. Yeah. 70 fucking uh -huh. years? Yeah. What the actual fuck, Brandon? Yeah. This just raises too many... This is going to be the least satisfying episode of Cryptopedia it's ever. So, so the, the only episode about a real fucking thing is going to leave so many more questions than any of the made-up things or, like, the folklore or, like, the things that we... This, there's so many more questions I have about eels. I just... What? <clears throat> How is this? How? <laughs> How? So, <clears throat> why? In, in 1904, Johannes Schmidt came closer to the answer. From 1904 to 1930, with money from the Carlsberg Beer Company, he went on the largest scientific exploration of leptoencephali to be undertaken to this day. Of course. So he collected, measured, and recorded the leptoencephali, slowly working his way until they got smaller and smaller and smaller until he found their origin, the place where all eels come from. The Bermuda Triangle. That sounds about like, honestly, <laughs> like at this point in the story, Brandon, like this is like, 
I I guess. Yeah, the sure. More, why not? The more we know, the more you're like, what? Just why? Why? Like it, this? At, at this point, <laughs> I'm just like, sure, fine. Yeah, whatever. Like, I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, it's like yes, you know that eel that oh that's every we've known about forever, and like you can eat and you can go and you look at them. You we we we, we they oh. <laughs> Oh boy! So, right. so I guess the whole interdimensional traveler thing is is on the table still too. The interdimensional traveler thing is still and shall remain on the table, John. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> so more specifically, I hate. <laughs> I hate the fact that 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 like an excuse for Bigfoot can be used for eels. Yes, like a super common creature. And I hate it. Uh, So, more specifically, the Sargasso Sea. A sea with no land borders. A sea that is 1.6 million square mile uh, uh, kilometer garbage patch in the ocean. That's the Sargasso Sea. The surrounding ocean currents define the Sargasso's edges. It's kind of like like when you pull the drain in a bathtub and like all the bubbles like go Why? to right over where all the swirly water bits are. That's the Sargasso Sea. Jesus <clears throat> fucking Christ. So here's the weird part. Uh, the Sargasso is 6,000 kilometers. This is the weird part. This is the weird part. <laughs> yeah. This is the weird part. He says the, after yeah, saying this that, is the weird that squid that, that 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 fucking eels live seventy years and they fucking their 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 larval stage only exists in the water. This is the weird part. They're, yeah, they live for seventy years. Their larval stage only exists in areas where eels don't exist. Um, in the Bermuda Triangle, the Sargasso Sea <clears throat> is six thousand kilometers from the start of where European eels would have to migrate from. To this day, no heel has ever been observed in the Sargasso Sea, <laughs> even with our underwater drones and expeditions. No eels. Maybe there's just like a mother eel that is at the bottom of the Sargasso Sea that's like just constantly shitting them out. Maybe, <laughs> but it's. I just want to say it gets crazier and crazier. No eel has ever been observed. Where all eel are uh, are known to come from, which is six thousand kilometers from what? And I just want to restate facts, but just start yelling them louder and louder because it's That's just fair. fucking crazy. I, I think crazy. I understand. I understand why you wanted to record this before before things happened. Before no. the baby was here. This is why I wanted to record this before the baby was here because it's so crazy, and I know I wouldn't I- be able to like. Keep like a professional audio recording tone where you can hear my voice clearly, but maybe not wake a baby because eels are crazy. Mm-hmm. I I don't get it. How do eels? It's uh, how do eel? How, how do, do eel? eel? Like how how do eel? It's it's one thing for an adult eel to migrate thousands of kilometers and spontaneously grow reproductive organs on that trip to the Bermuda Triangle, but how does an eel that's four like the four millimeter long larval stage of the eel of the left encephali make its way do the exact same 6,000 kilometer trip to Europe currents play a part using their leaf shape like to drift and catch currents yes but active swimming has to play a part we don't even know how long eels stay in their larval stage or if its change is triggered by salinity changes like by the changes of how salty the water is, does that cause a physical transformation so in the eel? Has has anyone ever like tried taking one of the larvae and just dropping it in some fresh water? That's so I I presume that so if we go back to Eve's um uh he had it just in a tank, so I don't know if that tank yeah. was fresh or salt water, but there would not have been a, a salinity change in that tank, I assume, unless he just one day dumped a bunch of salt in it and poof he's got an eel. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> well, he would remove the salt somehow. We, yeah, we, but either option is fine. It would be less weird than the, whatever the fuck is really happening. Um, so for the first time in history, eel eggs were found in fucking 2009. Um, officially recognized in 2011, uh, 31 eel eggs were found in Guam, which is in the Sargasso Sea. So for the first fucking time in 2009, they even... Knew that eels, they could prove that they had eggs. 
Wait, so did they hatch? So presumably the, the 31 eggs would have hatched in Celeptoencephali, and then they would have floated 6,000 kilometers to Europe, where they just magically become a fucking eel. Japan researchers collect wild eels for eel egg for the first time. Yeah. 2011. It's Holy shit. It's, yeah. It's cuckoo bananas. It's Most eels for food are raised in farms using fry or very y- young eels caught at sea. But eel fry numbers have fallen substantially from their peak in the 1970s due to overfishing and climate change. Yeah, so like they just catch baby eels and turn them into grown-up eels. So they're not like breeding eels on eel farms. <laughs> it's cuckoo bananas. Um, the team believes that the latest collection of eggs will bring about a breakthrough in developing eel farming technology and facilitate conservation efforts. I love the fact that it's like, like knowing what, how eels reproduce is literally technology, like considered yeah. a technology. It's a technological which is breakthrough. <laughs> fucking hilarious. Right. So before 2011, when that discovery was officially recognized, It was only assumed that eggs would have had to exist. Like, we were, like, mad. Like, if you go back up to that life cycle chart, just egg was there because they're, like, they can't not have eggs. Like, uh. I want to point out, too, the eggs coming through a dimensional rift still not off the table. Eggs coming through a dimensional rift in the Bermuda Triangle is still not off the table because, again... Eels have never been observed where eel eggs are. That's, that's like, interdimensional eels are still on the table. <laughs> maybe, maybe they don't have a lifespan of 70 years. Maybe they're immortal. Maybe they're and they immortal. just trans, maybe they just transcend our dimensions. Like, yeah. the, the lifespan of an eel on Earth is just them existing and getting ready for their true life. Yeah. Uh, or it's just aliens. It's, it's just aliens like, you know what? Let's leave hands off Earth completely, except for this one way in which we'll fuck with them. And they just keep grabbing handfuls of eel eggs and flying them over the, to the Bermuda Triangle and just dropping them there. And they're like, yeah, let's watch them figure this shit out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just bananas. Um... <laughs> Uh, just in in closing, I want to touch on the Mighty Bush's eel skit, Eels Up Inside You, which you eels were up inside you. referring to. Find an exit where they can. Exactly. And to that I say, snubbed-nosed eels. These pleasant little bastards burrow into bodies of any host they can find. Hot. The, hot. Right, all right, so now I'm, I'm diverging off the European and American eels. Because it's just too crazy, and I'm going to have an aneurysm if I just keep learning about so whatever. The, the, these guys hunker down into the nearest host fish's spine. Uh, but before that, they make a habit of finding pregnant fish, entering, and gorging themselves upon the unborn embryos. Some of these demons were found to be residing in the still-beating heart of a mako shark uh, right here in New York. So Seems good. So, Seems good. You so this this now makes the episode. There's a creep show episode, and that this is fucking hilarious that I watched literally yeah. yesterday. <laughs> that now makes so much more sense. What happened? So spoiler for creep show episode five or yeah. so. Um, basically, a dude finds like a leech that's like an angula form, which is effectively uh-huh. an eel. Um. He finds a basically an eel in the Amazon that will suck body fat out of a person. But oh, okay. the th- the thing is, it it lays eggs. It lays eggs and lar and puts larva into the body of the person they suck the things out of. So, okay. like that was their explanation for where eel larva comes from, and like where eels or, oh. or le- the leech in this case. So yeah. it's very it's very clearly now that I'm like. Now that I know this backstory, I now understand the fu- whole fucking point of that episode of Creep Show, and I hate it. It's uh, the worst. Uh, I hate this. Why did you do this, Brandon? Yeah. 
<clears throat> so the, the, the eel from Mario 64 had me an eel hate since that game came out. Uh, but this rabbit hole was so deep, I couldn't not do an episode on it. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, freshwater eels are cryptids. They just are. I They're, mean... They are. In the 2,559 like, <laughs> years since Aristotle wrote, uh, we have 31 eggs, zero testicles, and a guess that they fuck in the Bermuda Triangle. They actually fuck in front of me. <laughs> let's 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 Hot. make sure that let's make sure that fact is known. Okay, that's the important fact. We have to remember that they fuck in front of me. <laughs> But eels, not for my pleasure, for have, my torment. Have no reproductive organs until John does finger guns at them, and then they just—they hey. <laughs> just grow ovaries and testicles. Uh huh. That's the trick, right? Oh. Like, just I—you I, <laughs> just need to put me in the farm. I, I'm the tech. Yeah, you are the tech. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. This, a little mighty mighty Bosch tones and and uh, God making finger guns, and boom, you get yourself some eel eggs. Has anyone played ska music to eels? No one has played ska music to eels. Oh, oh, oh! I'm just having a bad memory from recently. Was it? Oh, I no. think it was the mighty. It was it the mighty mighty boss tones. I, it might have been the mighty um, mighty boss tones. By the way, yeah, they're. Uh, oh, sorry, oh, I, I was adding too many muddies. They are responsible for William Shatner's new spoken word album, Bill. So, that sounds like a thing the Mighty Boss Tones would do. The one guy produced it. I forget his name. <laughs> that sounds like something that someone from the Mighty Boss Tones would do. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, was it? I why, think it was the Boss Tones. Why does... I, I, guess, I guess Shatner just knows that he can print money. Yeah. By doing anything. So, like, it doesn't matter. Like He's I, 90, I'm actually, by the way. What? He's 90. Wait. He's 90. 90? I went on a William Shatner rabbit hole too recently. Wait. He is Wait. exactly 90 years of age. The man that who just, fuckers... Jeff Bezos just launched into space on a cock-shaped rocket and dropped a new album is 90. Wait. That motherfucker. Is 90. He's 90 years old? Yeah, he wrote a song about horses. He wrote multiple songs about horses. And a song I, that's, a, I think, about having sex with motorcycles and wife swapping. Um, Probably. That's the, that's the first track on the new Bill album. <laughs> Wait. <clears throat> yeah. He's, uh, yeah, William. I. Shitner. Yeah, he was born he, in I, 1931. He's 90. I just listened to a video of him speaking after the the rocket launch, Brandon. Yeah. He doesn't sound ninety. No, he doesn't sound that much different than he did a couple like like twenty years ago. He's still as I'm not gonna say sharp as a tag, but as sharp as he was twenty, thirty years ago. Yeah, he, like he clearly knows where he is and that it's not forty years ago. Like. He's very much with it still. I, I mean, he's got stupid amounts of money because yeah. of nerds. Sweaty nerds will forever give Sweaty that man money. Here's see, here's how with it this ninety year old is. There's videos that, like interviews with him where he's making jokes about impregnating the sky because he knows he's going to space and the rocket sh rocket is shaped like a penis, right? So he's ninety and making dick jokes on the news. Listen, listen, and then he'll be like, "Buy my new album." Bill, <laughs> I wrote it with, and then he'll drop name drop the guy from the Mighty Boss. I just Tones. want more. I want more money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. Like whatsoever. I need nothing. Like nothing. None of this money is anything I need. I yeah. want it. It's... And then I'm gonna go watch. The, and then I'm gonna go go to John, and I'm gonna go watch some eels fuck. Oh yeah. Oh, let me. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. Let me. Hang. Oh, all right. Let's see. Let me see how fast I can do that. William Shatner, Bill. Eels because fucking? every time he drops a new album, I have his his Christmas album on vinyl. Um, I got the special edition, but it will blow your mind. Um, who features on some of his? Tr I think he did a um, 
he's got like a Jonas brother featuring and he's got like all these like really big names. He's in its tracks with like ZZ Top. It like he has like big 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 what? names. Well, that's because like like once again, and you have to remember like sweaty nerds of all walks of life will flock to William Shatner. Okay. That, that is Cuz like true. you don't have to just be a sweaty st- uh, the, the episode is done by the way we're just yeah. talking about the sweatiness of bill shatner's nerd fandom the thing is the thing is like you don't have to be a sweaty star trek nerd to be a sweaty nerd of for nerd for bill shatner yeah you just have to be a sweaty nerd for bill shatner and that includes people who do um that includes people who do you know acting shit yeah Right? Because, like, and music. Because he's kind of, he's kind of, like, the perfect sweaty nerd target. Yeah. Like, you can Like, Adam West was. Like, break into a new audience, kind of, if you do. Yeah. You're a spoken word album with William Shatner. Um, Pretty much. Pretty much. Like, like, William Shatner is, like, like collaborating with William Shatner is like getting parodied by Weird Al. Yeah. A little bit. It's it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you know you're here now. You did a you did a collab with William Shatner. All right, you're in. Yeah. Oh god. He did so much oh too many things on his Wikipedia page. It's also and not surprised, hard to find the list of everybody on his spoken word albums because Everyone wants to pretend they don't exist for to an extent. <laughs> Rocket Man. Oh, even worse than that is uh, the uh, how do you spell Leonard? Uh, Leonard. Leonard Moy. Skinner. No. Uh, oh, yeah, Leonard. Oh, are you gonna are you gonna talk? Ab- are you gonna talk about the fucking uh, Leonard Nimoy singing about Bilbo Baggins? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> that 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 song is. Uh, I'll just I'll just it's drop that just, in the cursed channel for. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It's just such a good song. Uh, and by that, I don't mean it's it's got artistic merit. I mean it's just so fucking funny. It's so here's a fun fact. And uh, it, it was it was I want to say the 70s. Um, I forget, but some company thought it would be a really good idea to sell records using. Um, uh, TV personalities as the the vocal uh, leads, so mm-hmm. there are enti- there's like you can have an entire album of like Leonard Nimoy just singing covers, and it's as good as you would think it would be. This song is two minutes and eighteen seconds long. Oh yeah, it is uh well worth it. It is uh just, mm, chef's kiss. Lives a oh. brave little hobbit that we all admire. <laughs> yeah, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, if you ever need to not come, <laughs> you can go ahead and listen to this on your head. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, if you if you need to be well, actually, wait a second, Brandon. Wait a second. Listen, I don't know. There's how two ba- types. I don't. Know there how are two types works, of people in this so world. So I need this there song. Are, there are two types of people in this world. People who this prevent will prevent this will prevent them from coming for at least a week. Yeah. And people who will come instantly. <laughs> there are only two people in this world in regards to the song. And that's it. This get the clamps. Now put on Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> Quick. Oh god oh, oh I quick. can't have one otherwise. <laughs> oh quick get the uh what was that that extreme restraints um oh gosh quick get the The Humbler Yes quick get the Humbler Deluxe <laughs> You see I'm I'm more of a fan of the uh the Humbler Sport <laughs> for when you're on the go. Yeah <laughs> Uh, let me just go to the website real quick. No new promotions. There are nothing. Yeah, it's all the normal. Oh, that one looks. 
Hang on, let's click on the fucking machines tab. It, um, is 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 this is this Leonard Nimoy in a fucking machine? <laughs> uh, oh no, it's just a skeleton. Uh, no, everything seems kind of normal. Still, what looks like a sawzall. <laughs> well, yeah, that's like that's like the that's that's like the easy mode fucking machine. Yeah. Right, like, yeah. Now, what? Like you really somebody just looks at a sawzall and they're just like, "Hmm." It's like taking the it's like taking the seat off of a of a bike. Yeah, really. What you need is something with a flywheel on it, like the Maestro multi faced, <laughs> faceted fucking machine. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> that looks like you could use it on concrete. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> yeah. You know what the most horrifying thing about this page is? Um, man, if there is anyone who's still listening, I'm sorry. The most horrifying thing about this is the male masturbation machines. Now, now, here's the reason for that, right? So, theoretically, with a female, with like a, a thrusting machine uh-huh. or something along those lines, you can just get off of it, right? You if something's get, happening, you can't get. St- you don't. I don't think you strap yourself into the male ones. You don't. You can get stuck in a. But it's suction. Oh, Brandon, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like that's the problem, right? Like yeah, you're so, creating. Like you could p- potentially create an airtight seal, and then you're having a time. Here's something that we have to hope they they thought about or discovered already through trial and error. There has to be a release valve. Because once it goes all the way in, then you've displaced all of the air, and now you've got negative pressure when it tries to pull. Um, so there has to be a release valve or, like, a secondary hole, like, you know, you'd want in your water bottle if you're trying to drink water really fast. Basically, this is this is all explicitly related to eels, just as an FYI. This is, you could, I mean... Use one on an eel, and I wouldn't feel bad because all They're animals, demons. nothing bad should happen to an animal unless it's the godless abomination that we know is an eel. I feel like there's, I feel like there's explicitly porn that involves eels. Probably, I feel like I've seen an eel come out of a butt before. I feel like I've seen something like that too back in my old, my olden days back in high school. Yeah, it seems that seems like something that I saw on old internet. Yeah. I feel like I saw that on old internet as well. Uh Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, there's a sale on impact canes down from $22 to $14. Is that like is that like an impact drill? No, it's just a cane. It looks like a Harry Potter wand kind of. It's just for like thwacking. Whacking. Just mm, for okay. the thwacking. For the thwacking. Mhm. The thwacking thwack. <laughs> thwackity thwack don't come back well they actually, actually have they, some they pretty ex- good sales <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie <laughs> god damn it well I know what Brandon's doing after this episode <laughs> hey man free shipping and handling for, for a lot of orders is that like? Is there like a price limit for the free shipping and handling? I'm sure there is, but it's probably it's probably like a hundred. It's, it's probably very easily achievable. I mean, if we're talking sex toys, yes, yeah, it's extremely it's extremely achievable. Oh, very much so. <sighs> so before we before we go into we find the the humbler 2.0, um. <laughs> This has been Cryptopedia. Our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is also at Cryptopedia. And it looks like Brandon discovered something horrifying or amazing. <clears throat> I found a throat desensitizing spray. Something that I hadn't considered, but I'm now not surprised uh, does exist. Huh. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's to negate gag refluxes reflexes but i'm not sure yeah yeah i i I imagine that's what it's for so you can i think i think that's 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 probably what it's for if i'm gonna connect the the dots um if you have anything to say about that please 
please do not email us at cryptpediacast at gmail.com. There's a sale on Hell's Tether Ball Stretcher. <laughs> if you have something to say about that, however, email at us at us at cryptpediacast.com. Because that one we want to hear about. That one um, we want to hear about. So we have a Patreon. Um, we got some Jackalope level listeners. We got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and Matthew Smith. We also have a Facebook group that I don't pay attention to. Sorry. Um, and then we have a Discord channel that I do pay attention to and will post things at random ass times during the night when I wake up or I'm still awake. Um, if you enjoy the podcast and you're on a platform that has rating, reviewing, or, or subscribing, be sure to do all those things. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, you can always send them in. Um, we're going to be a little bit more scattershot going forward in terms of like how frequently we release, but you know, we'll we'll play it by ear. Indeed, indeed. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And remember, don't get your dick stuck in a fucking fuck machine. Don't don't, don't get it stuck. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Brandon. That's it. <laughs> I can't. I can't even. This this episode has done dealt psychic damage to me.